Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Luke Hosh, and today we're going to be talking about adders, gate delays, and simulating circuits in Racket. So here I have a diagram of a half adder. One of the circuits that you have to write in homework five. Um, and I'm, I'm going to walk you through it. So when we're doing something like binary addition, write a couple binary numbers. We have to do something similar to if we were doing normal, you know, t base 10 addition. If I was adding you know, 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, I would do it digit by digit. I would say add the, the 3 and the 5, and you get an 8. Add the 4 and the 2, and you get a 6. Add the 1 and the 3, and you get a 4. And that's my answer. Okay, similarly, I have to do that here. The last two digits... I can match together to get the last digit of my following binary number using half adder logic. So if these are a 1 and a 0, I'll get a 1. You can notice here if there are 1 and a 0, my sum is a 1. If there are 1 and a 0, my sum is a 1. If they're both 1s, <clears throat> my sum becomes a 0, but I carry a number over. You remember like in in, uh, in early math when they said, okay, you add them together and then you carry the one, or something like that. If, if over in my base 10 edition, I had something like a six and a five, I would say, well, this last digit becomes a one, and then I carry one over so that two plus four plus the one I carried over makes this seven. So you have to carry over in binary two, that's this carry digit. So one plus one gives me a zero sum but it gives me one carry. And then of course if they're both zero, my sum is zero and my carry is zero. Okay. For the rest of these, I mean, we'll, we'll show that that works here uh, in this circuit. So if, uh, so let's, th these don't have labels on them. I'll, uh, I'll write them in if I can. So this is the sum of A and B. It's the X or the carry is going to be the and. So the reason this works is you know, the carry is only one when both of the inputs are one. That's the same as what an and gate does. The sum is one when only one of the inputs is one. They cannot both be zero, but one of them must be one and the other must not be one, which is what an XOR gate does. Right? So if A is one and B is zero, this XOR will return one and the sum will return 1, while carry will be 0. Uh, if they're both 0, both of these will output 0. If they're both 1, this XOR will output 0 for the sum, as it should, and the carry will be 1. Okay, to add together these other places that aren't the last, you know, the end of my binary number, um, I need to take into account whether there's a carryover. So that's what this third input is, the C in into my full adder. Right, this is a diagram for full adder down here. I don't have the full truth table written out, um, but you can if you'd like. You can base it off of this. Um, and the feature, you know, the, the way this works is that you take into account both of these digits as well as whether there's a carryover this factor into the sum and into the carry out. And this seems pretty easy to do, you know, as a human, right? If there's a one carry over, then you know I just add these numbers together, one, zero, one, that gives me two, which makes this zero, and then I carry one over. A computer has to go through all of this logic. Um, I guess we, we can walk through it. Or we can let's do a couple examples, right? So say that I'm trying to do one and one with a one carryover. All right, so here I'm gonna say A equals one, B equals one, and C in equals one. This will be our example. We'll see what we get for the sum and the carryout. So if you if you think about this, you'll probably say, oh, well, my sum should be one, and my carryover should be one. All right, if we're adding the numbers, uh, this is 2 in binary, and this is 2 in binary. Oh, let's do, here we go. 
This is 3 and 3 in binary. If we add these together, so I would have to use a full adder to add these two positions together. The carryover would be 1. The last digit of this would be 0 because uh, because 1 and 1 combine to make 0 and then there's 1 carryover. Oops, I meant to click up here. So here's my carryover up here. And then here we know that there would be a 1 and then over here the carryover would be 1. So the final answer would be 110 is my is the result of my addition. Because these three 1s combine to give me a 1 and 1 carryover. So sum of 1, carryover of 1. If we walk through that in this diagram, uh, so the sum is determined by the exclusive OR of either C in or the XOR of A and B. Okay, so C in we know is a 1. A and B are both 1 in this case, so the XOR is not true. This is 0. The XOR of this 0 and the 1 from C in return 1 for the sum. This carry out is the OR of well the AND of A and B. We already know A and B are both 1, so this AND will be 1, so this OR will be 1, regardless of what this other AND is. We can check uh, this AND is the AND of C in and the XOR of A and B. This XOR of A and B returns 0, C in returns 1, so this AND won't, won't work out. Uh, but this AND over here will. This OR only needs one of them to work out, so the carryout value will be 1. Okay, I hope that example helped you understand how this full adder logic works. Um, you don't have to memorize it to be able to write this out in your racket homework. All you really need to do is to assign symbols for all of these different wires, all of these gate outputs and gate inputs. <clears throat> all, right, all of these intermediates here, like this, that don't currently have values. You know, like this one here doesn't currently, no, sorry, not values, that don't have like symbols next to them. They don't have, these wires don't have names, but they are wires in the circuit, right? So you would have to assign, I can't see my, can't see my underscores. You would have to assign symbols to all of these. Because remember that every gate output has to have a symbol associated with it, right? Okay. Now I want to talk about gate delays. So for the problem next value, I wonder if I have it loaded up. So for next value, I checked and you get a wire, a circuit, and a configuration. So remember that the configuration has it's the current values of all wires. Circuit has all the gates. And wire is what uh, what value you're trying to get, or the, you're you're trying uh, to get the next value of the input wire. So let's let's uh, let's think what that might look like in this full adder case. Uh, but first, we have to talk about gate delays. So at the very beginning, we said we are going to input a, b, and c in as one. So let me write that in. Here, this is 1, this B is also 1, C is also 1, but right when we start this, um, you know, right when we set these values, it isn't instantaneous that the sum and carry out are evaluated. It takes some amount of time. It takes a certain number of gate delays to calculate it. So XOR can be calculated, and every gate can be evaluated in one gate delay as long as its input wires have values. So this XOR, both of its input wires have values. In one gate delay, we can get a value for this wire here, which would be 0. Similarly, we can get the value for this one over here, because we have both of its inputs all set up, and we'll get that it's 1. Is there anything else we can do? with just these three inputs? I don't think so. Right? This one here requires this wire, which is calculated during the first gate delay, and all the rest require some other stuff. Okay, in the second gate delay, we're going to evaluate this AND and this XOR. So this AND gets that 0, gets that 1, and this turns into a 0. 
we can evaluate this XOR because now we have the value of this wire here. We have 0 and 1, and we get 1 here. We couldn't evaluate this during the second gate delay because we needed this value, which wasn't calculated until during the second gate delay, because we needed this value here. This one passed it along to this, X, uh, to this AND. So now during the third gate delay, we can calculate the carry out, which is 1. So you'll notice that to calculate the next value of any output wire, all we need are the current values of its input wires, right? So if I want to calculate the value of sum, all I have to do is look at its input wires. I don't need anything else, right? I need the current values of its input wires. During a gate delay, input wire values may change. So not in this example, but say that while we were trying to calculate sum, this changed to a 1 for some reason. That wouldn't affect how I'm calculating next value for sum because this was a 0 in the previous configuration. I just need to calculate sum based on the current values. It might have been a little bit confusing. Um, the idea is that every single single wire in the next gate delay is calculated is uh, yeah sure is calculated based on values in the current scenario or in the current state okay and this has implications for next config as well so let's look at one of the uh, one of the the examples of next config. So here you're calling next config on cell CT, CKT and cell config one. Here is cell config one. To calculate the next configuration of this, you basically have to calculate the next value for every single input, right? I'll go through the inputs. I'll say calculate the next value of x one, calculate the next value of x zero, calculate the next value of y one. But you have to be careful because as I'm doing this, if I update the value, if I say something like, hey, in my next configuration, look, uh, what changes? Let's find the one that changes. V1 becomes a 1, right? If I say, okay, V1 becomes a 1, let me just change it to a 1, that will change how I calculate the other values that I haven't yet calculated. Right, if I'm going recursively, calculate x1, then x0, then y1, and I'm updating my previous values as I do that, that won't work, right? The better idea is to do something like take another copy of this, take another copy, and then I'll update this copy of cell CKT while looking up values in the previous copy. I cannot be looking up values in the copy of the configuration that I'm updating. That will lead to problems in calculating. I'm just warning you because that's a problem a lot of people uh, often run into on this question. Definitely something I hit when I was tackling this problem in my homework. Uh, something a lot of people run into. So be careful that you're not trying to look up the values, the current values, in a place where you're putting the new values. Right? We calculate new values in the next gate delay based on the current values. Okay. Hope this video has given you a better understanding of circuits, of gate delays, of how circuits work in real life and how our simulation in Racket is going to work, how to approach next value, next config, and writing your half and full adders. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.